I've been 3D printing parts and tapping holes in them for the better part of a decade, but turns out there's a much better way. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. You've seen me make a lot of parts on the channel over the years, and you know that I use a lot of different tools and techniques when I do that. Now, one of my favorite techniques, especially if the part is small, if it doesn't require the strength of metals, and especially if I need to iterate on the design multiple times, is 3D printing. 3D printing is great for a lot of applications, but one of the challenges is that the plastic doesn't hold screw threads very well. So if a part needs to be screwed together, I can tap a hole in the plastic and it will work as long as it doesn't require a lot of strength, and as long as it doesn't need to be assembled multiple times. But if it does, it's really easy to strip out the threads. And it's also relatively labor intensive to drill or remount the holes and then tap them as well. Well, it turns out there's a better process. And this is something that I've been playing with recently and I thought I would show it on the channel. Now, when you buy commercially produced plastic products, you'll often see threaded brass inserts molded into the plastic parts at the time of manufacture. Well, those same threaded inserts are available and can be heated up and inserted into a 3D printed part very easily. That's what I've been playing with and that's what we're gonna look at today. You may have seen some clues in the background of previous videos that I have another CNC build on the way. And this is the electrical control cabinet for that machine. This is just a 20 by 20 by, I think, nine inch box. It's gonna contain the power supplies for the servos, the motion controller, all of the switching gear, the pneumatic valves, and power supplies to run the system. And you know, laying something like this out, especially if it's tight, requires a lot of time. I've had this on the floor in my living room for a couple of weeks, and every time I walk by it, I stare at it and shuffle things around, just trying to find a good layout that I'm happy with, that'll have appropriate cooling, that everything will fit, and that once I get all the wiring in, it'll be something that I can live with. So what has to be in this box, since I'm using ClearPath servos, I've got the power supplies for the servos here. I've got the motion controller. This is a Centroid Acorn with an optional board that uh, interfaces to ClearPath servos. Underneath here, I've got a network switch that's required to provide Ethernet to the Ether 1616 IO expansion board that provides more inputs and outputs than you can get on the base Acorn. And then I've got a couple of relay boards that connect to the Acorn and to the expansion to switch external devices, like the uh, pneumatic valves down here to run the automatic tool changer and the purge, and to switch things externally like the uh, servo brake for the Z-axis. And then down here, I've got the power rail with the breaker, main contactor to turn the power on and off, power distribution, and the incidental power supplies for you know, various DC things in the system that require power, including the motion controller. Now, most of this stuff is just industrial, you know, DIN rail mounted equipment. This is just a standard industrial contactor. I've got DIN rail down here and it just snaps right into place. Same thing is true of the power supplies for the servos. These power supplies have uh, threaded holes in the back of them so you can get standard uh, DIN rail plates, put them on, and then these will just fit right on DIN rail. It makes it really easy to mount and unmount and move stuff around. Now, some things don't have that. The Acorn controller, for example, is just a PC board and it's just got holes in it in the corners and it's intended to be mounted with screws like to standoffs and I very easily could just put some plastic or metal standoffs on this back panel and screw this thing down but in my case this build is pretty tight and to get everything in here and still have room for the wiring I've designed some 3D printed mounts to stack things up. So I've got this switch and instead of having to put it somewhere else I can put it down here designed this 3D printed part that will just go over it, screw down to the back panel to hold that in place, and then it has threaded studs in the corners that I can just mount this PC board to, or PCB or printed circuit board, however you prefer to say it. Uh, this is the Ether 1616 PCB, and I just made a similar mount for it that allows it to be mounted down to the board, 
uh, down to the backing plate. And then the uh, relay boards, I've got, this isn't the final design, but I've got some 3D printed parts that will allow this to be stacked on top of the expansion board so that then all of the terminals can feed down into the wire ducts. And I should be able to fit everything in here and still have it be a nice, neat installation that I can feel proud of and that I can also continue to work on and maintain for the life of the tool. Now, when I made these parts initially, I just left holes in the corners of these and then drilled them out to make sure they were the right size and threaded them, just tapped them with a, with a high-speed steel tap. And that works, but as I've put this together and taken it apart a few times, these holes are already starting to strip out. And another thing that's not totally clear um, necessarily if you've never done it, is that when you tap a hole in plastic, the plastic kind of stretches during the tapping operation and then squeezes back down. And so it kind of grips the screw. And so you can't spin a screw in with a screwdriver. You have to crank it in all the way down. And so this is what I'm hoping will be a lot better with the brass threaded inserts. And from my experiment so far, it is just night and day. It's a where have you been all my life experience. Let me get some of this out of the way and let me show you what I mean. These are the inserts that I picked up to play with, and I just picked these up on Amazon. Uh, they're available everywhere. I can put some links in the, in the description. These are M3 by 0.5 threaded inserts. And just to give you a sense of scale, here's my uh, machinist scale. Those are inches or bananas if you like. Um, so these are really, really quite small. Um, and M3 is a small screw, especially for working in plastic, but it's a screw that I find myself using a lot. It's very typical for uh, uh, printed circuit boards for mounting screws, and it's very typical for 3D printers, uh, which is where I started out with a lot of my small mechanical stuff. And you can, here's an example of a part with a threaded hole in it that is threaded for M3, and I've got an M3 screw here, and it absolutely does work. You can tap a hole in plastic for M3, and uh, you know I can put this in here, and it does work. This particular one, when I first uh, put it together, was so tight you had to sit here. Actually, once you get a little deeper, it is pretty tight, and you have to crank the, uh, the screws down. It's actually, um, when the screw's really tight in the hole, it makes a big difference if you have to put in a lot of them. Um, but now that I've run a screw in and out of this hole a few times, it's starting to get loose. It's starting to not grip real well. I can start to feel more play. And you know, if I have to take a screw in and out of this hole a few more times, I'm gonna to need to print a new part because the threads are just not gonna be any good anymore. Now, these particular inserts are designed to fit into a four millimeter hole. If you look around on the web for instructions on how to put in these inserts, uh, you'll find a lot of instructions that say you need to make a tapered hole. And while you absolutely can do that, I mean, we're 3D printing after all, you can just design that in your CAD software. Um, it is more trouble than it's probably worth. For this particular insert, the narrow end of the insert down here is about four millimeters wide. So if I 3D print a hole that's right on four millimeters, it will just start to go in and then I can heat up the insert and press it the rest of the way down. So let's go ahead and heat some of these up and put them into some parts. But of course, in order to heat them up, we're gonna need a tool. Now the easiest way to generate pinpoint controlled heat in most shops is with a soldering iron. This is a Heiko FX888. Uh, this is not the newest version. This is the one with the old analog dial. The newer ones are digital, and I believe the model number is the FX888D. Um, I'm actually using an FX951 uh, for most of my soldering, which has a different style of handle and heating cartridge. So I've had this one just sitting on a shelf, and it is perfect for this application. If we take the, the end of the handle apart here, you can see there is a threaded nut that holds on a collar, and that collar clamps on the actual soldering iron tip. And you can buy these in all different kinds of geometry, but the tip itself is just a hollow cylinder that sits over a heater cartridge. This is a ceramic cartridge that has the heater in it and the temperature sensor for the temperature control. It just slips on there and then the uh, collar tightens down over it. 
Now we could try to find a tip that would be suitable for putting these little threaded inserts into plastic parts, or we could just go ahead and make one. I've got some brass and the geometry of this is simple enough, so it should be really easy to just pop over on the lathe and make a tip that's purpose-built for putting in these inserts. And this is what I came up with. The back end is just the geometry for the tip. We've got a hole drilled in the back. We've got our a controlled shoulder length and diameter so that it can clamp into the soldering iron handle. And then up front, we've got the relief for the uh, clamping ring over it. We've got the right diameter to push on this particular insert and the right diameter tip to go through the threaded hole in the insert to locate it. So I got a piece of brass. Let's just go over to the lathe and make one of these. This is the material that we're gonna use. This is a piece of 3 8 inch brass rod. And I'm just gonna put it in the collet chuck here. Actually, this isn't 3 8 this is eight millimeter. I stand corrected. And we need about, I'm gonna go ahead and do a relatively short stick out while we do the features on the end and then we'll pop it out further to do the rest. The first thing we need to do is turn down these features and uh, because of the stick out, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just start from the end and do the first ones first, but we'll start by facing it off. Okay, now that we got all those features on the end done, I'm gonna pull it out far enough that we can turn the main body and then part it off to length. Pretty good, let's flip it around. You're gonna swap out the eight millimeter collet for a five millimeter collet. And this should fit perfectly. On that diameter. It's a very short diameter that I'm, that I've got in the collet here. So we'll see how straight it runs and we'll adjust it if it's not quite perfect. It looks pretty good. Not perfect, but close. I'll just push it in with a, a bearing bump tool here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Well, we've got our tip. Let's put it in the soldering iron. This is cold at the moment, so I can touch it. Let's see, that works. 
can see the tip there, so make sure it fits. The inserts fit on the end of it, and they do. So let's heat it up and let's put in some, uh, put in some inserts. Okay, that is up to temperature. I have it set to about 300 degrees Celsius. Um, the plastic, this is uh, PETG in this case, and it was printed at 255 Celsius. I went ahead and set this to 300 because I'd like to be just a little bit hotter just to make it go quickly. I don't want to waste a lot of time putting this in. So what I'll do is put the, I got my part here, and I'll put the insert on the end. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna do it going to put the insert in the hole first. And I should be able, it has a, that little four millimeter pilot. Yep, that'll go right in the hole. And we could put it on the end as well and then try to be very careful with it. But I'm just going to line it up here and push it in. Just like that. And then I'm going to put it down on the surface just to make sure that the end is flat. And there we have one threaded insert. Let me go ahead and put the other ones in this part and then let's give it a, a shot and see how the board fits. Well, that is super simple, okay? I have the board here. Let's uh, put in some screws. Now, these are just uh, M3 by 0.5, eight millimeter screws. That's very nice. Those spin freely and they lock down securely. And there we have that assembly on the back with the holes that I need to mount it. Let me go ahead and I've got a couple more parts here. This one's already got threaded inserts in it. This is an assembly that will sit on top of this board to hold the relay boards. And then Got a couple more parts here for that, and we've still got the this part that needs inserts. So let me go ahead and put them in this as well. Well, that just could not be simpler. Now, if you look around YouTube, you will find a bunch of people that have uh, made more complex jigs for doing this. Uh, one of the things that I've seen is a lot of concern about the threaded inserts going in straight. And so people have made what are essentially small presses or modified small drill presses to hold a soldering iron to come down and press these in straight. In my experience, just playing with this a little bit, I don't find that to be necessary. I've been able to just press these in straight or straight enough now, maybe if I were using really long screws, it would make a bigger difference, but uh, let me go grab the box and let's actually install these, put some circuit boards on them and see how they work. Now, if you've never worked with this stuff before, this is a back panel. The, the box itself, you could you know anchor things to the box if you wanted, but you can also buy these panels that sit in the box and these panels then allow you to mount everything to it. In fact, you can take it out of the box to work on it which I will when I do the wiring, and then put it in the box. Now, normally, these are solid. This is uh, one that I actually made because this one was back-ordered. Um, but I wanted the perforated panel, but I made a solid one, just used my plasma cutter and painted it and made a mess in the shop. Uh, but eventually this came in, and these perforated back panels, if you've never worked with one, they are amazing. These holes are the correct size for a self-tapping 
number eight screw. And I think they're actually the right size if you wanted to run an M4 tap through them, they're the right size for that as well. But they're on quarter inch center, so it's really easy to run down things like this wire duct uh, just using screws. And I designed all of these mounts with mounting holes on quarter inch center specifically for this. Now the screws that I'm using are these. They're called lath screws, but they're self-drilling. And the reason uh, that I chose these over ordinary screws is they have a truss head. And the truss head then means you don't need to use a washer. It has a nice wide bearing, and these have a self-drilling tip. So they will clean out this hole to the right size and thread right in just using uh, an impact driver. So I've got this where I want it, and I can just come in here and run down the screws to mount it. Just like that. Now I can just bring in this board, and it'll sit right on those studs. Now down here on the other end, I wanna stack up these relay boards. So I designed this part, which is a standoff that gives me the right screw holes to mount the relay board spaced up off with a second set of holes cantilevered over where the holes are in the base PC, PC board there. So I can just put this on and the holes should all line up. And what do you know, math works. So that's mounted and now I can put this on top. And I've got yet another set of spacers so that I can stack a second uh, relay board on top. Okay, that's one. There we go, nice and simple. I have to say that was a much more pleasant experience with the threaded inserts in there than it was screwing into plastic when I did this the first time. And that is that. We got everything mounted on the sub panel, of course the sub panel itself can be lifted out to work on it. And that's good because now I've got about 200 connections and 400 wires to crimp. And uh, if you wondered in the last video or one of the previous videos why I bought a pneumatic crimping tool, uh, this project is why. Well, I have to say I am extremely pleased with how that worked. I think I'm gonna use these on every 3D printed project from here on out. In fact, putting those inserts in really was easier and took less time than it took to tap holes in the 3D printed parts, especially if I didn't get the hole diameter exactly right. So I think having the, um, having the pattern figured out for those and having the inserts on hand is gonna be uh, really beneficial for future projects. Well, that's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.